The death toll rising to 13 in that municipal building rampage. This is the most devastating day in the history of Virginia Beach. Police identifying the suspected gunman with a grudge killed in a long gun battle with police officers. Shot fired, shot fired, second floor. Survivors traumatized, now sharing their stories. We were all just terrified. I'm still shaking. The shooting spreading across multiple floors of the building. Still actively hearing gunshots. What we're learning about the guns the suspect used and how the scene, described by police as a war zone, unfolded. We have an officer shot in the stomach at the post office. Plus, police on the scene of the shooter's home, what we're learning about him this morning, and what investigators will be looking at going forward. As some 2020 presidential candidates call for action on gun control after the latest mass shooting in America. We have live team coverage from Virginia Beach with all the latest. From ABC News, live in New York, this is Good Morning America. And good morning, America. Dan Harris has the morning off, but I'm happy to be joined by Tom Yamas here on the desk this morning. We begin with the tragedy in Virginia Beach, a gunman opening fire inside a municipal building and killing a dozen people before being taken out in a gun battle with police. It's the deadliest mass shooting this year. And overnight, police were at the suspected gunman's home, likely searching that residence as the investigation is just getting underway. Whit Johnson is live on the ground in Virginia Beach, heading up our team coverage on this attack, stunning that community and this country. And with this morning, we're learning more about the gunman and his alleged motive, but also how people got out alive. Absolutely, Tom and Eva, good morning to you both. Another devastating mass shooting in this country, this community in mourning as we learn new details about the shooter and the carnage that he left behind. I want to show you the scene behind me here. That is building number two back there, still a crime scene. Police cars, caution tape blocking off the area. Here's what we know right now as we come on the air. 13 people, including the gunman, are now confirmed dead in the attack, at least four others injured. Law enforcement sources confirmed to ABC News that the gunman has been identified as a longtime public utilities employee. Police say he was killed in an extended gun battle with responding officers who, by all accounts, likely saved more lives. <laughs> Shotgun 24054 Courthouse Drive for Building 2. Cars advising of a male in front of Building 2, possibly shot. This morning, carnage at a Virginia Beach Municipal Building. At least 12 victims dead. Several more are hospitalized after police say a gunman with a grudge carried out a bloody rampage. We were all just terrified. We almost kind of felt like it wasn't real. Police say around 4 p.m. Friday, a wave of commotion erupted, bullets disrupting the end of an otherwise typical work week. We heard shooting, but we didn't think it was that close, like in proximity of the building. Law enforcement sources identifying the suspect as 40-year-old Dwayne Craddock. Police say he began his murder spree in the parking lot, killing a victim in their car before entering the building, where he would gun down multiple co-workers indiscriminately. So actively hearing gunshots. Shots fired, shots fired, second floor. Employees shaken. I heard a bunch of screams, or what sounded like screams, and I looked out the window and I saw a bunch of people running in one direction. Others barricading themselves in nearby offices. There was probably about 20 of us in an office. The building, just one of a sprawling complex of city offices and agencies that deal with public utilities and public works for the city. Police say the suspect navigated his way through multiple floors. When officers arrived on scene, they quickly became targets. The best I could describe it is it was a long-term gun battle for police officers. Confronting the shooter in building two of the campus. Police now describing that scene as a war zone. One officer shot and injured, saved by his bulletproof vest. And the shooter isolated in a stairwell on the east side on the second floor. Police eventually injuring the shooter who later succumbed to his wounds. Federal law enforcement descending on the scene, now joining the investigation. The Virginia Beach community heartbroken. This is the most devastating day in the history of Virginia Beach. But standing strong. This day will not define Virginia Beach. We will come together. We will show the strength of our city. Ed Whedon is joining me now. You're a city employee. You've worked here for 18, 18 years. years. 
You were here when the shots rang out yesterday. Tell me what you saw, what you heard. Well, a coworker and myself were in the lobby of the first floor, and we heard a like a popping sound. The coworker turned and said, "Did someone fall?" And he said, "Yeah." We, we ran to the staircase, and there was a lady on the bottom of the stairs, covered in blood. Another coworker ran upstairs, and um, was totally because there was an active shooter upstairs on the second floor. So, and got my cell phone at the building, and the fire alarm went off, and. And that's, that's when we found out there was a, 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 a former worker who was um, upset. When you first heard those words that there's an active shooter in the building, what was your initial reaction? I thought it was a disgruntled um, citizen or something, upset about his tax bill or his water bill or something like that. Never thought it'd be an employee that you talk to daily. Here you are in the moment. You actually saw a victim on the ground. What did you do? Did you run? Did you hide? Well, I, I, I just skidooed it away like I was supposed to, especially when she came down and she said, there's an actor should get out of the building. Um, like I said, I walk, we walked out another door because we didn't know where he was. Um, but this lady was shot in the stairwell, so we had to figure he was probably close by. Just went, to, went, just went out another door of the, of the building. Just and, what, but you were hearing the shots? Heard, 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 a, heard a popping sound, a couple of popping sounds. It, it was a loud noise. It was a, definitely a gunshot, though. How would you characterize the scene? Other employees running for cover? We understand that people were hiding in office rooms. They, they, well, upstairs, a lot of people were, they pushed the desk down to, to keep the guy from coming in. Some of the employees on the first floor, they went to offices that were open and locked themselves in there. So during this reaction, it was hide behind the door, which it should have been leave the building. When, when, when I heard that there was an active shoot, I went to a, I went to a phone to try to dial 911 and, um, and try to get the sheriff who was using building one. But there, by the time I did that, I, I just grabbed my phone. That's where the fire alarm went. You just can't make an announcement saying there's a shooter in the building. Put the fire alarm, everybody, they, everybody leave. So it was, it was scary. It was scary. At what point did you know it was all over? After you got out of the building, what, it, what activity did you see from police responding? When we, we walked, well, we never knew if it was over because there was constant movement. Um, when they walked, when they walked us over to the courthouse, they took our names and addresses and statements, and um, we were allowed to go. How do you recover? Ed Whedon there also reflecting on what it will be like to actually go back to work in this building when everything is cleaned up and when it's time to get back to business as usual. Reflecting on that will certainly be emotional. New details are emerging this morning about the shooter as investigators try to find out why this happened. ABC's Stephanie Ramos is at a hospital where some of the victims are being treated. Stephanie, good morning. Wait, good morning to you. For many, especially those in this community, it's hard to even fathom how the suspect could have just opened fire shooting at people indiscriminately. Right now, investigators are trying to piece together what led him to do this. Overnight, SWAT teams and police raiding the home of suspected shooter Dwayne Craddock. Police seen gathering evidence from the suspect's home. In this video, you can see it was equipped with three cameras in the window. Investigators searching for clues, trying to figure out what drove the 40-year-old to open fire at people inside the government building. He just seemed like an average guy to me. You never would look at him and think he would do something like that. His neighbors stunned, saying they didn't know he could cause such carnage. You've got so many emergency vehicles coming and going all at the same time. This morning, ABC well, News confirming that investigators learned the suspect was recently terminated from his position as a city employee. We're going to mention his name once, and then he will be forever referred to as the suspect, because our focus now is the dignity and respect to the victims in this case and to their families. This morning, ABC News confirming that investigators learned the suspect was recently terminated from his position as a city employee. Walking into the building with two firearms, a long gun and a handgun, according to law enforcement. Police saying he used a 45 caliber handgun with a sound suppressor, the weapon found with multiple empty magazines. The Wall Street Journal reports he'd purchased multiple firearms in recent weeks. Several of the victims are being treated at this hospital, many of them in surgery overnight. Their families and this community hoping they all pull through. Wit.
Everybody pulling for those victims. Stephanie Ramos for us here in Virginia Beach. Thank you. Let's bring in ABC News contributor and former FBI agent Brad Garrett joining us now from Washington. Uh, Brad, sorry to be speaking with you under these circumstances, but we've talked about so many of these mass shootings in the past. We've already learned a lot about the shooter in the first 24 hours. What are the investigative priorities right now? Primarily figuring out what were the motivations of this shooting. That combined with was he a lone shooter. I think that probably answers itself. But the key is to gather as much information about what happened, what drove him there. Because let's face it, what these guys are driven by revenge. If he got fired recently, that may have been the precipitating event. They're going to look at that, interview people at work. They'll pull his computers. It looked like there were cameras on his house. What's on those cameras? Uh, they're going to find basically a track record of this guy preparing to do this mass shooting. Trying to put together the pieces here. But whether government buildings or businesses, how difficult is it to actually protect a workplace from a shooting like this? It, it's very difficult because it's all driven by reasonableness. Is it reasonable to have metal detectors and, and armed guards at a utilities facility at a city a civic center? And the answer is no. And so that's the problem when you try to defense against mass shootings is if you can't get in front of them. In other words, pr uh, information prior to the shooting, which maybe there might be some of that there, but it may not be direct. You get in front of the shooter, but most of the time that doesn't happen. And so what, what ends up being a situation where People can walk into buildings if, if they want to kill people and start shooting them in most environments, considered uh, a soft target, basically. And we know, Brad, that city employees here and businesses and government offices across the country actually go through drills for this type of incident. What can people do, though, to protect themselves during a mass shooting as it all plays out? Well, the real key, obviously, is you know, follow the simplistic rules of run, hide, fight. And, you know, fight, obviously, if there's nothing left to do. We've had recent mass shootings where people have taken on the shooter. They've saved other people's lives. They lost their lives. But it's about awareness, Wit. People need to be aware when their environments, particularly at work, follow the drill, but also use common sense because the drill may not work depending on where the shooter might be and get yourself away from him if possible, but also think about if I have to take him on, first of all, am I, can I do that, and how would I do that? Exactly, and then being able to make that decision in the heat of the moment as well. Brad Garrett for us in Washington, thank you so much. We appreciate it. President Trump was briefed on the shooting details. ABC's White House correspondent Tara Palmieri is on the North Lawn with how the administration is responding this morning. Tara. Good morning. With the president has yet to make a statement on the shootings, but the White House says that he's been briefed and he's monitoring the situation. Now, this attack has already reignited the gun debate after the massacre in Las Vegas, where a bump stock was used to turn a semi-automatic rifle into a machine gun. The Trump administration banned bump stocks and added some background check procedures for purchasing a gun. And just last year, President Trump suggested that he was interested in more comprehensive gun reform, telling senators he's not afraid of the powerful gun lobby. But there's been very little activity since. And then just a few months ago at the NRA convention in April, President Trump said that gun owners make our community safer and our nation stronger with. All right, Tara Palmieri at the White House for us. We do appreciate it. Of course, a somber morning here in Virginia Beach. We'll have much more coming up on GMA in our next half hour. Eva and Tom, let's go back to you. And wait, to go back to that interview with that government worker you had, I mean, there must have been mass confusion with the fire alarm, the shooting, and then hundreds of government workers who were on that campus at the time. And he described, Tom, people running into offices, barricading themselves, flipping over tables, doing whatever they could basically to survive. But, you know, as Brad Garrett actually pointed out, people are in different situations depending on, on where you are as a mass shooting plays out. In his case, he was able to run out the building. For others, they had to barricade and, and find shelter wherever they could. But truly a, a horrific scene playing out here. And no doubt it's going to take a long time for the people here in Virginia Beach, and especially those who worked in that building, number two, to recover and feel comfortable going back to work and everyday life.
All right, our thoughts and prayers with those yeah. people in that community. Thank you, Whit. We'll check back in with you shortly. To politics now, the Democratic presidential candidates vocal about this tragedy, expressing their condolences, but also calling for action. ABC's Lindsey Davis is in San Francisco, where several of the candidates have gathered for the California Democratic Party State Convention. Lindsey, good morning. Good morning to you, Tom and Eva. This weekend actually marks the largest gathering of presidential contenders so far. And there's a lot on the docket from immigration to impeachment. And certainly with another mass shooting taking place in this country less than 24 hours ago, gun control is certainly front and center. Reaction to the deadly Virginia Beach shooting swift overnight from the Democratic candidates running for president. The campaigns tweeting out reaction, nearly all of them expressing their condolences as well as calling for movement on gun control. Another mass shooting today. And it's not just the mass shootings. Gun violence touches families every day. 14 of the 23 presidential candidates are gathering here in San Francisco for the California Democratic Party's annual convention this weekend, aiming to highlight their different campaign positions. Senator Bernie Sanders hosting a rally. The principles of our government will be economic justice, racial justice, social justice. And just hours after those shocking photos surfaced of dangerous overcrowding and unsanitary standing room only conditions at a Texas border facility, several candidates spoke out at a forum on immigration. I have proposed a plan. Number one, it stops in its tracks the heinous activities of Donald Trump to bring division and hatred to our southern border. For now, their stances on the hot button border issue are strikingly similar. They're human beings that deserve respect. Even nursing mothers were separated from their babies? That is not about border security. That is a human rights abuse being committed by the United States government. Now, California may be more important than ever before. Certainly there are a lot of delegates up for grabs, but they've also moved their primary schedule up from June to March on Super Tuesday. So essentially you have the Golden State saying, look, we want a piece of the action when it comes to helping to determine the presidential nominee. Tom and Eva. All right, Lindsay Forrest there this morning. And this morning, major flooding in several states with swollen rivers bursting their banks. Take a look at that. Flooding expected to reach historic levels with some residents urged to leave their homes and move to safer areas. ABC Zachary Keish is in Dardendale, Arkansas. Zachary, good morning. <clears throat> Tom and Eva, good morning to you. We're here alongside the Arkansas River. Parts of this state saw more than 15 inches of rain in the month of May alone, one of its wettest months in years. And all of this water needs a place to go. That levee breached at about 12 o'clock going into Thursday, Friday morning. Uh, the impact has been absolutely devastating for some of those low-lying areas. I'm talking about homes and businesses in those areas. Other parts of the central U.S., including places like Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri, are also dealing with major flooding as well. Tom? All right, Zachary Keish for us this morning. Zachary, thank you. And Rob Marciano is with us now in studio. And Rob, you've been all over the country dealing with this extreme weather the past few weeks. It has been relentless. What else is in store? Well, more rain is coming today. They've been dry the past couple days, but these rivers are in flood stage and won't be pressing many areas a little lot until later this week. So you've got the Arkansas, Missouri, Mississippi, all of them in flood warning. And they're in the areas as well. Uh, we should be dry for the most part today, but over the next several days, uh, we're looking at potentially over five inches of rainfall in this area right along the Arkansas River Basin um, with the right through five. So uh, that's not good news, obviously. And we'll hold it off today until late in the day, and then uh, actually severe weather threats going to be through Springfield, St. Louis, getting up in eastern parts of Illinois, strong winds damaging the outfit. We'll have a tornado 15 days now in a row of tornadoes. And then tomorrow, that impulse of energy gets towards the northeast. And once again, this heavily populated I-95 corridor late in the day tomorrow, 4, 5, 6 o'clock at night, we'll see damaging wind on the up and potentially a great deal of the ones in the bottom of the work all the way up the street. Let's look at the headlines, otherwise nationally, I'm not going to work for it. Hello and good morning, Washington. Meteorologist Alex Liggett, a great start to the weekend. Temperatures today reaching the mid-80s, a great pool day. Morning clouds, but afternoon sunshine in that low humidity. Dew points will be into the upper 50s, so a lot of comfort. 
Herndon Festival. That starts at 10 o'clock today, goes through 11 o'clock tonight. You can meet our very own meteorologist Brian Vandegraaff. Looks great this afternoon and evening. Looking ahead to your Sunday, we will have the threat for some severe storms. Best chance between 2 and 8 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Happy June 1st. It's the first weekend of June. And it's nice to have yeah, you it's back. Yeah, it's so nice to be back.